this combo looks amazing, right? The kind of execution that will make one think, wow, this guy is good. But here's the truth. This combo was never played by a human. In fact, it was all scripted frame by frame by yours truly. Hello, 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 my name is Lajandum and I've been a Killer Instinct player since its debut in the mid-90s in the arcades. I spent years trying to like learn everything about KI, even the lore behind each character. I've been spending years making tutorials about Killer Instinct and what's amazing about the original Killer Instinct is that to this day we're still discovering new techniques, new mechanics and that's what I love about the fighting game communities is that even though these games are 10, 20 years old and more, you know, we're still discovering things, we're still having fun and finding new ways to play online. With the, the original KI, you can play in so many ways now. You can play on Ficade, Amachi, you can play on Nintendo Switch Online, you can play on Arcade 1-Ups. And all these options are available to you. And now we have these fighting collections popping up a bit everywhere. We had the fighting collections from Capcom. The upcoming Mortal Kombat uh, Legacy collection, I think it's called, something like that. Quite amazing. And with that comes a lot more content about these retro fighters. It's so great to see and I'm always very thankful. And I don't take that for granted, right? It's maybe just... Uh, you know, a trend for now. We never know, right, with YouTube, but what I know is that my love for Killer Instinct will never change. But all that said, uh, lately there's something that started bothering me. Not just as a player, but as someone that truly cares about the fighting scene. The real problem, seriously, is the tool assisted gameplay and the deception that comes with it. So if you want to know exactly what I'm talking about and why it sets a dangerous precedent for the content of retro fighting games in general that are to come in the next few years, well, follow me. Let's do this. So what you're seeing here is called BizHawk. It's an emulator that's available for tasking. Tasking, in other words, it's a short task. It means tool assisted speedrun for the ones that don't know. It, these kind of tools have been used for many, many years uh, in speedruns and whatnot. It's been used to discover new glitches, new bugs, or to create kind of a, a playthrough of a game, let's say Mario 64 and see how far you can push the game to cut as much time as possible. And I want to reiterate, this is not cheating, okay? This is literally you going in a game and recording the game as a video, and it's like you would go frame by frame in the video and change what happens in that film, in that video. So instead of, let's say, you press jump at the third second of the video, well, you could literally delete that jump button and instead put a punch button and then you would play it back and it the character would punch. But where I want to go with this is that when people are actually using these task tools without disclosing it or hiding it uh, in, in small letters uh, at the end of their description, passing these combos and these matches as genuine gameplay, that's not impressive anymore. It's deceptive. You might as well just watch uh, two computers like playing each other because that's pretty much what it is. And if you don't believe me right now, and if you're like, oh, whatever, la gendarme, like, it's not that bad, you can never touch a SNES controller of your whole life and you will be able to pull off that 20 plus hit combo with Cinder that I'm about to show you. And by the way, this video isn't here to cancel anyone. We have a mission, an obligation as content creator to protect the viewer from deception, from fraud, from watching some two robots fighting each other. So here we are back in the emulator BizHawk. Uh, I'm gonna show you how Test Studio works exactly. Here on the left, you have the frame numbers. So that's each number represent a frame, okay? Each line there is a frame. And at the top here, you have all the buttons. You have like the LNR buttons, you have uh, 
the A, the B, the X, and the Y, and you have start select and all the arrows of the D-pad. So here with Cinder, we have a eight hit combo. It's uh, using a, a small like glitch that you can do with the Trailblazer. Not a lot of people know about this trick because it's a newer trick that's been discovered not too long ago. Me personally, I discovered that trick through uh, another content creator that's called Renan BRG that's this guy is pushing the boundaries with the, the original KI. I strongly recommend his channel. And I think he discovered that trick from another person as well. So I don't know what's the origin of that trick, but basically with the, the strong trailblazer uh, using the X button by default on the Super NES controller, you can actually do multiple trailblazer if you at a certain distance from the ground and at a certain distance from your enemy it has to be very specific but basically sender is gonna touch the ground really fast and that allows you to pop another trailblazer right away without uh, wasting any frames i've read uh, through the comments that someone was able to push it all the way to 17 it's in a row right which I've not been able to do even with the task tool. But here I have a combo of eight hits, so eight trailblazers in a row. And I'm gonna push it even more. You will see really quick how easy it is. We're gonna add another trailblazer. Let's see. So let's remove all those. So I put that there. No, not good. Maybe a bit earlier. Oh, you see that? Got it. Now we're at nine. And here, I already did this before recording this video. So I already know that the next Trailblazer won't work, at least with this setup that I did. You're gonna see how unnatural this is because I'm gonna jump really quick and do another Trailblazer so it doesn't end the combo. Ah, okay, we got it, we got it. All right. Well, bang, that should, oh no. A few moments later. Aha, there you go. Yeah, we're at 10 hits and the combo is not finished. Let's add more hits. And then after this jump trailblazer, we're gonna add a few more hits with an auto double. Uh, after a strong punch, we can add, uh, we can add a medium punch. As you can see, I'm not playing the game here. I'm just casually creating a very, very difficult combo very easily. Okay, 13 hits. And how about we add a manual to that so it looks even cooler? Pack, pack, pack. Left, left. I think it's L. Perfect. So we're adding a manual here. Casually, of course. 14 hits. I can even add manuals, you know? You can do whatever you want. You're in a task. And then we're gonna add another auto double. So we're at 16 hit right now. And let's finish this combo properly with a beautiful combo ender. Uh, mm. Right, it's something like that. Oh, and voila. we got it. Oh, we could add a, a little finisher at the end. Why not? A little juggle. Oh, I'm, I I put that juggle a bit too late. That's okay. If it's, if it's too late, we can cut that out and just put the input a bit earlier in the frames of the video. Bang. Perfect, you see that? We're over 20 hits, and I could be a total KI noob. And now, the final results. Let's watch it together again. Wow, a real pro. I could just export that, or just record my screen or whatever with OBS, and put down my YouTube channel, and pass this off as a legit combo that I just did with my skills and my uh, dusty Super NES controller.
this is not to like point fingers to anybody like for me as i've said in many other videos in the past i'm always happy to see that there's many people many creators like trying to not revive but to continue the legacy of these old retro fighting games so in the end the only thing is that i think if you're using cheats hacks like a rom hack of some kind or if you're using a task tool like a task studio that we just saw in this video i think it's really important that you mention it in the title and in your pinned comment you know, that, that should be the description. Almost nobody reads the descriptions. Sometimes they read it, but they won't click on your description and read the whole thing, you know? We should fight against that because what's gonna happen in five years from now, 10 years from now, when we're gonna have AI task tools? Fuck. Imagine that. Oh, I don't want to give bad ideas, but it's bound to happen, right? You're gonna have a, like an AI make the whole task for you. You're just gonna enter a prompt and say to the to the task, oh, okay, I want you to do this combo this way, and it's gonna do exactly what you, you told the AI to do. Even in the speedrun community these days, we're finding out like many years later that uh, that speedrunner had used some kind of tool or some kind of visit things. Uh, he had made some cuts in the video to make his, his speedrun look legit. And that's completely wrong. There is a uh, car jobs and uh, all these YouTube, big YouTubers making videos about those. And people are outraged about that with reason. So we should be outraged about fighting game content being made with tools and i think it's the most important thing to keep our retro fighting game communities alive and healthy for the next coming years the next generations so thank you very much for watching this video i will be back for more and on that note i wish you a beautiful day beautiful night peace out guys <laughs>